Happy Friday, movers and shakers. <laughs> this is Shannon coming to you live on a Friday morning in San Francisco. And this is our first dedicated live Q&A session for our movement series. So I'm excited. <laughs> I really wish that I could do this live Q&A in a gym setting, but at the moment that's not possible. So it'll have to be here in the pseudo living room kitchen. Anyways, so right now we're in week three. If you started with our first course ever, we are all in week three. And as we continue, you might see that new people are gonna come in at different points in time. And regardless of where you're at, all of these things will always apply. But if we are all in week three right now, the first week we went over stability, we went over warm ups and mobility. And then this week we are going into adding some weight, adding some weight into the mix, um, starting to pinpoint those muscle fibers, especially the type one muscle fibers, and starting to build on top of the movement patterns that you've already been building in the warm ups. I know that. A couple of you have been either sick. I know that Jen, you were sick and we have some people that maybe have other things in life going on. And so they couldn't follow along exactly week by week. And you know what? That's okay. This little course is not going anywhere and you guys can go through and do the workouts at your own pace. You can go through the information at your own pace. The thing that we really want to encourage you guys to do is to use us, use us in the Facebook group. I can't tell you how much information we have to share with you, not only on form technique, but noticing if you're ever having anything that feels uncomfortable in your body, helping you to understand what that means and actually giving you insight and movements to be able to correct that or help it to feel better or help the movement to feel a little bit more smooth. Um, there's very tiny uh, tweaks that we can do to movement patterns for different body types that will actually just clean movement right up, uh, perfect your form, and allow you to continue to follow along and add weight where, where you want to. So without further ado, uh, we're gonna go right into some of the questions that we have. Okay, so as we start out here, uh, again, if you're watching later, you can just fast forward. Uh, if you are in Crowdcast, if you're watching this in Crowdcast, you will be able to use the question function Click on the button, it'll just fast forward you to where we answered that question. Uh, if you are having questions, post them in the Awaken Your Movement uh, intake forms and we will go ahead and slide them in here. So we'll work with those and answer them in the following week if you can't be here live. So let's go. All right, is steady state cardio different than endurance training? For example, how would you categorize running at a steady but moderate speed for three to four minutes? So they are different. Um, steady state cardio is working in our oxidative energy system, and you guys will be learning about that this week. Uh, I believe it's in our first lesson of the week. So in this energy system with steady state cardio, your body doesn't have to contract all the muscles, right? You are using muscles to move your body in space, but you aren't soliciting specific muscle contraction onto spe specific areas. So you will be using primary, uh, primarily stored body fat as fuel. That does not mean that cardio is king. That doesn't mean that your body will be uh, burning more calories. Uh, it just means that you will be using a certain energy system and that certain energy system is using stored fat as fuel primarily. So steady state cardio is its own thing. Uh, circuit training, when now you're adding weights or body movement, but even if it's body movement, you are still using gravity to your advantage to do things like push-ups, squats. You are lifting your body against gravity, therefore there is a, uh, there's a tension that's being used. Uh, this will start to now work with two other energy systems, your oxidative and your glycolytic. And in these energy systems, you're gonna to start to actually solicit more muscle growth. Where steady state cardio, uh, and in this question specifically, three to four miles. Depends how quickly you can complete three to four miles. I haven't ran in a long time, so I'm kind of like spacing on how long that might take. 
That's like a, that's like a light jog. <laughs> Lisa's chiming in here. Six miles per hour. Okay. So like 45 minutes. All right. Uh, so in this case, you are basically telling your body like, Hey, we want to be doing this thing for a, a pretty decent amount of time. It's not just 10 minutes. Um, 45 minutes is usually when we have depleted our glycogen stores and now we're going to be, uh, empty essentially. And now the body's going to want to use other things for energy. So because running or jogging is using stored fat primarily as fuel, it actually has to get through glycogen stores before it gets to that stored fat. So that's why we say that it's helpful to do steady state cardio on in a fasted state, because whenever we have glucose or glycogen present, our body will always choose to use that first as its primary source of energy. When we do not have that as an option, then the body will be more readily available to use stored fat. But there comes a time where the body is going to get tired and blood sugar levels will be affected and you'll need to replenish. So long story, sto long story short, uh, steady state cardio and circuit training are not the same things. Your heart rate will increase in cardiovascular or um, circuit training. Uh, your heart rate will not necessarily increase. It will get to its set point with steady state cardio and it'll stay there. And that can be really efficient for, um, you know, a moderate rest day, uh, giving some of your muscles a break. Um, if you are in certain body types, you'll definitely want to implement steady state cardio in addition to circuit training to really help your body start to pull from fat stores and start to um, get that metabolism going in terms of really soliciting different muscle groups, which is what we're doing in the workout programs, right? This week, you guys will be learning about triceps. Triceps don't really let you rest very frequently in between each exercise. And that's on purpose. We really want your body to be going from one exercise immediately into the next without resting, which will keep your heart rate up. And it's also going to continue to challenge those muscles because if you guys have tried it out, you get to round three and you're like, oh, damn, got one more. Okay, that kind of sucks. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I hope you guys are, are getting able to experience that personally so you can give us feedback on how that feels. All right, our next one here. Does strength endurance training as opposed to steady state cardio require pre-workout carbohydrates? The answer on that one would be yes and depending on the intensity. So for example, if I were to do just one tricep of this week's workouts, it wouldn't really require my body to have a pre and post workout intake. Uh, if you're doing the complete thing, absolutely. You wanna have a pre-workout carb and a post-workout protein shake to effectively support the body for muscle contraction because you will be depleting glycogen stores throughout that hour and then you'll want to have recovery because you are working with your type one muscle fibers and working in a more glycolytic energy system, which is going to, you guys are going to learn about that soon. So steady state cardio does not need carbohydrates beforehand. If it's like 45 minutes or under, uh, you can absolutely do that in a fasted state. You can even do it up to an hour. Like it's totally fine. You'll feel it towards that last 15 minutes. That your body feels deplete depleted, but in that, um, in the example of a steady state cardio, if you can do it fasted first thing in the morning, that's going to be super helpful for fat loss and for uh, strength endurance training and the circuit training style that we're doing this week and next. You definitely want to have a pre-workout carbohydrate around 25 to 30 grams. And then post-workout, you're going to want to have protein shake mixed with water if your goal is fat loss. If your goal is to maintain or have muscle gain, then you can absolutely blend that protein powder with like a banana or, you know, some sort of carbohydrate that will also help to um, give you energy and recover muscle tissue and refill those glycogen stores. Mm -hmm. Next one is sarcoplasmic hypertrophy training synonymous with strength endurance training? Great question. <laughs> so the simple answer is no. Um, the studies aren't really clear as far as whether or not we can specifically target sarcoplasmic or myofibril hypertrophy. And we haven't gotten to this yet in the, in the courses, so we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves here. But 
uh, it all depends on intensity, really. Um, if we start to go into a circuit, for example, and the circuit is 10 squats, 10 push-ups, <laughs> 10 squats, 10 push-ups, um, period. If you were to now, and you were going to do it 10 times, so you had a total of 10 reps at one time, right? That would be circuit training. Your body would be giving itself enough rest um, if from squats to push-ups to be able to recover the muscles a little bit. They're going to refill ATP, refill glycogen. You guys will learn about that too very soon. And when that happens, you have enough rest that you can perform efficiently, and you're still kind of working in that strength endurance range. But if you decided that you were going to do 100 squats and 100 push-ups, like as quickly as you could, right? Let's say that you could easily do 50 body weight squats. And then by the time 51, 52 came around, you were like, oh my God, I need to like stop for a second. Your body is actually going to start to produce, um, it's going to start to solicit type two muscle fibers for strength because the type one have now been taxed. And now you're building the intensity and asking your body to do more than it's comfortable doing. So same thing with push-ups, right? If you can only do like 10 push-ups, and then you're now getting into, oh, well, I'm trying to do 100 at a time, you would basically do 10 or however many you could do, rest just as long as you would need so that you could increase and get right back into it and try to finish that 100. So it's not only the training rep range, it's the intensity and the rest that you're requiring of your body. So you can absolutely have a, a blend of muscle growth if you are having the appropriate intensity. And I feel like, well, you guys will learn a lot more about that as we continue. Mm. Okay. Kind of a similar question. Does strength endurance training primarily stimulate type one muscle fiber growth? Uh, it usually does if you are doing just straight strength endurance rep ranges. Um, however, my feeling in my body is that when I'm getting to like round three or four, I feel like I'm starting to have to recruit a little bit more of my muscle fibers because I'm starting to get fatigued. And additionally, not all strength endurance training is created equal, meaning that some people will do these workouts and go like, I'm going to use five pound dumbbells for the entire thing. And maybe that's perfect for your body. But for someone who could easily do 20 pounds um, dumbbells, you know, like two dumbbells, if you're doing a single arm press or something like that, or you're doing dumbbell box squats, if you can easily do two twenties in your hand, but you're doing two fives, well, your intensity for that workout is going to be very different. So the people that are using the heavier weight for their body and really pushing themselves, they may find that the first, you know, one or two rounds, they're primarily targeting type one muscle fibers. When it gets to three or four rounds, when they feel like their body is being taxed and they're actually getting to a type of fatigue within the last like two or three reps, you're going to notice that your body will start to contract the type two muscle fibers or solicit those. Uh, Lisa's saying, I feel a big shift at round three. Very cool. Yes, totally. So that's the really cool thing about um, strength training. When you start to understand uh, some of the science and some of the things that are happening in the body, especially with muscle contraction and fuel that we're using, you'll be able to feel the different um, either muscle fibers or energy systems that are starting to kick in. And when I generally feel like that shift in round three, I feel like, okay, my muscle glycogen stores are getting low. Um, that's usually towards the end of the workout where my body's just like, oh, I think I'm done. <laughs> Like, okay, I'm totally done. Like, I don't feel like doing another one. Like, I don't think I'd do a very good job. Um, whereas in like the first try set or so at round three or four, my body isn't necessarily to that point. My body's just kind of like, oh, this is sucking a lot more than the first one. So I kind of use <laughs> that bar barometer. So it's either sucking more, which may be... <laughs> Sucking more without form being compromised. Maybe you're starting to solicit type two muscle fibers. <laughs> um, but on the other hand, when you're like, hell no, I'm not doing any more of this. I'm done with this crap. Uh, then you might be just depleting glycogen and your workout should be over. Uh, on that note, 
If you guys do get to that point towards the end of a circuit and you really feel like you know your body personally, you feel like you're giving it your all and you're just sitting there at like even the end of the second circuit of the second tri set and you're like, I don't think I should be doing anymore. Don't. Listen to your body. You guys know your body best. Uh, these programs are designed to be flexible in the sense that because we're not training you and you're, we're not right there with you and like kind of in your grill um, going, yes, this or no, that um, we really are trying to give you all the information that you could possibly need to educate yourself and figure out what feels best for you. So if you're feeling like your body is taxed, maybe you didn't get enough sleep, maybe you didn't have a proper meal ahead of time, um, or maybe it's just that, you know, you haven't trained for a while and this stuff is new and your body's really feeling the impact of these kinds of movements and it's hard, which it should be, uh, then just listen to your body and take the rest as needed and, and modify as needed. Maybe three sets are too much and maybe you should just, or excuse me, maybe four sets are too much and you should just do three. Yeah. Okay. Next guy. If I just focus on training my type one muscle fibers, will I be less bulky? Oh, this is a great one. <laughs> Oh my gosh, such a good question. Where do I begin? Okay, the short answer is no. Uh, muscle fibers actually occupy, the, the type one muscle fibers actually occupy the majority of our muscle bellies for a larger portion of the muscle mass that covers our body. So we essentially have more type one muscle fibers, generally speaking, than we do type two. And that makes sense because we're doing a lot more endurance based movement throughout our lives than we are straight strength. So if you think about that, uh, if you are building specifically type one muscle fibers and that's your focus and you're doing a lot of training for that, it can actually cause a bigger increase in size than if you were to focus on strength. Uh, kind of interesting thing. Um, and I've definitely noticed this in my own body that when I would do heavier lifting and focus primarily on the type of training that would solicit more type two muscle fiber contraction, I would get stronger, denser muscles, but they weren't necessarily bigger. On the other hand, when I would do really high rep ranges, which for my body is really great for certain parts of my body, like it's hard for me to develop my glutes. It's hard to get those like a little bit more like give volume in that area. And so it actually works really well for me when I do high rep ranges for my glutes um, with a blend of heavy stuff, too, because I want to keep it balanced. But uh, yeah, that works well for my body. Um, so the, the short answer is no. And if you are female, which currently right now, like most of us are in this group, uh, type one muscle fibers, females generally have more of them because we've kind of been training those to be more efficient early in our lives. And uh, when we are kind of in our going through puberty, if we're not specifically training type two muscle fibers, type one will start to dominate. So we'll be more prone to um, kind of getting that like fuller, um, almost like swollen feeling, especially if we have excess fat, if we are predominantly still working type one muscle fibers. So if we're still doing kind of like lightweight, high rep circuit training, that's essentially a lot of volume being placed on the muscle. And when I think of volume, um, I was always a little bit confused on what this meant ahead of time. So this is a cool example of volume. So when we look at volume, we can think of it like filling a glass, right? How quickly we will fill that glass. If you are doing really heavy lifting and you're doing five, five reps, for example, and let's say this is a hundred rep container, so five reps for um, four sets would get you about here. If you are doing volume, I mean, there's weight incorporated, incorporated in that as well, but there's also the number of times that you're contracting a muscle that makes a difference. Um, Cause each time you're signaling a different charge and you're having a different stimulus and you're pumping blood flow and nutrients into the muscle along with fluid. So the other thing is that if you are doing four rounds of 15 reps, 
Well, now we have efficiency there because we are continually building those muscle patterns, really making sure that the brain, uh, the muscle mind communication is working very effectively. So we're really driving those movement patterns in, which is why it's important to have proper form, especially in the beginning. Uh, and you're doing four sets of 15. Well, if this is 20, let me get my math. So like 30 and then yeah, like 60. So the volume is actually better. So volume in, in this kind of example. Um, I'm trying to be as thorough as I can with this question because it's a really great one. Um, again, along this same line, females are usually pretty scared that they're going to get bulky when it has to do with lifting. And it's so hard for females to gain muscle. It really takes a lot of effort. Um, I look at my body over the course of like the last 10 years, and I think maybe my muscle has fluctuated. Uh, three pounds. And lately it's just gotten less. And I've been like, Oh, it's so hard to keep it up. It's so hard to keep up muscle mass. And Lisa is saying you have to eat so much. We were talking about this earlier. If you want to build muscle mass, it's literally like having a second job. It's crazy. Uh, so, um, in terms of the fear of getting bulky, you won't get bulky regardless if you're doing circuit training or if you are doing uh, heavier lifting. And the purpose, the reason for that is if you feel like you're getting bulky, it's simply because you have fat that's on the outside and it feels like it's getting more swollen, especially when we start new training programs. You guys might notice that this week and next week, if you're on week three or four, that you feel like there's a little bit more like volume in the muscles that you're be, you're working. And there's a good reason for that. Nutrients is being pumped to those muscles. And so there's a filling that's happening, but that will go away once your body adapts and it'll take about two weeks. Ooh. All right, next one. Is it okay to incorporate additional steady state cardio to help create a caloric deficit so I can easily eat a little more food? Mm. Um, okay, so in terms of creating a caloric deficit, because steady state cardio is primarily going to be burning stored body fat and using that for fuel, there's no benefit in adding more calories by adding more cardio because the cardio, steady state cardio isn't essentially using calories for the day. It's, it's effectively using stored body fat and that's the goal. So if you're adding more calories on there, then it doesn't really have the opportunity as much to use the stored body fat because you're just adding more. What would be more effective is to increase the intensity of your strength training workouts that would solicit a requirement for more carbohydrates or protein to help with contraction and recovery. It wouldn't, uh, increasing cardio, especially steady state, um, at a moderate pace or intensity does not, does not, um, grant additional calories or a surplus of calories. If you want a surplus of calories, you got to start lifting heavier, lifting heavier and increasing the intensity. So let's say if you wanted to swap out one of your steady state cardio days for a HIIT training day, that would warrant more calories. Yep. Uh, but not just steady state cardio. If anything, your body will be better off being in a little bit of a deficit on steady state cardio. So you can really maximize the body, just not having any excess sugar to use, doing it in a, in a fasted state and, and using primarily stored body fat for fuel. And then the rest of the day, just keeping it, to your rest day ranges, etc. Yeah. All righty. Can you use different dumbbell weights for different parts of the tricep exercises? For example, I can't lift super heavy for any kind of shoulder raise, but I can lift way heavier on leg movements like squats and rear deadlifts. Is it okay to use multiple weights? Asking for the group. Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, for example, what I did for the first workout, if I can remember, uh, we have um, box squats, we have dumbbell box squats. I think I used like 20 to 30 pound dumbbells on those and then single arm row because it was 15s and I don't usually do 15s. Uh, it was, it's been a long time since I've done uh, this kind of higher rep range. So it's great. I'm really enjoying it. It's like a reminder like, oh, yeah, you need to keep it balanced. Uh, so 
for the single arm row, I believe I did 20 or 25 where generally I would do like 40 or 45, like six or eight times. Um, and then, yeah, so the simple answer is absolutely. You should be using different weights. Um, so yes, for sure, you should be using different light weights. Uh, you wanna make sure that you're using weights to the point where your body uh, has like two good uh, reps left in the tank. And I mean like, and this is called volitional fatigue. So let's say the rep range is 15 that we're in right now and you get to around the 12th uh, box squat, maybe not the first round, maybe not the second round, but like the third round, the 12th box squat, you're like, oh crap, like, oh, this is like brutal. Uh, you can take a breath for a second if you need to, and then knock out those last three. That's a really good place to be in, to really um, ask your body to do a little bit more than it's comfortable doing. Um, it might suck for a, for a second, but I find that I start liking it. Uh, when I get myself to that state, I'm like, ooh, yeah, just two more. I totally got this. Uh, Lisa's saying the triceps humbling, and I love them. If I start with too heavy of a weight, my body is like, um, no, by rep 10. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, I certainly made that mistake as well. I was like, I was like 40s for a single arm row. And then I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> yeah. 15 reps is way different, um, but it's just a fun reminder that we can literally take the same exercises and just make slight adjustments to rep ranges, to weight, to the type of equipment being used, and it'll give a completely different stimulus on the muscle. And here's a fun, fun fact or fun tip. If you feel like your body is really good at doing something, you should start doing something that feels hard. When we do something that is difficult for our body, it's requiring our body to do something it's never done before. Maybe it's never been efficient at that thing. And the reality is that our body will always choose the path of least resistance. So you'll see a lot of guys in the gym, for example, doing bench press and bicep curls because they hate doing legs and they're probably not very good at it. But that is the best thing that they could be doing for themselves is really focusing on the weakest body part that will solicit the most change in their body. So if there is a exercise um, or there is a type of training, like let's say that you're really good at lifting heavy or you're really good at doing legs, but you really kind of suck at upper body, you should definitely do more upper body, uh, that sort of thing. So specificity is key. And then choosing things that are really hard and focusing on those, because that's where you're gonna see like a pretty big difference. Um, okay. All right. So we know that there is a lot of information for you guys. And like I said earlier, this is really, this is an opportunity for you to go at your own pace. If you need, you can keep up with the workouts. And if you don't have time to go through all the lessons, they will be there for you. Uh, I would highly recommend keeping up with the workouts. It's super, super fun. Even if you don't have a full hour, you can at least do two of the triceps. Um, if you don't have access to a gym, you can do the movements without weight. Uh, there's so many ways that you can tailor it to fit into your life. Um, there really isn't an excuse to not do it unless you're sick. So Jen, you have a pass. Um, but realistically, you can make absolutely anything work. And I highly recommend that you're making a date for yourself to do these workouts. Make a date. You can't miss it. Uh, it's for you, it's for your life, it's for your health, it's for your goals. And yeah, Lisa, did I miss anything? Nope, okay. All right, guys, well, I hope everyone is having a wonderful Friday and, uh, and let's see your questions in the Facebook group.